Hi, this is Lou. Welcome to my channel and welcome to a series of art tutorials all inspired by the beautiful and ancient city of Edinburgh. I've lived in Edinburgh for over 10 years now and I'd like to take you with me to share some of my favourite locations and activities in the city through the medium of art. I hope that I can inspire you not just to draw and paint Edinburgh, but to take inspiration from where you live and where you visit to capture the unique architecture and history of those places. So join me for today's project, where we're going to paint fireworks in watercolour. We're also going to include Edinburgh Castle in the foreground. So let's get painting. This season is going to be all about Edinburgh. So in the past I've done quite a few like urban sketching style things. I've done some line and wash, uh, painting buildings, and I am going to do that. I'm going to cover that in this series, but I wanted to do a few different things as well. And so for this first project, we're going to do watercolour fireworks. So Edinburgh is really known for its fireworks, um, both at New Year, which um, in Edinburgh is known as Hogmanay, and uh, and also uh, in the summer um, during the festival, there are fireworks every night and then a huge, massive fireworks show at the end of the festival. So uh, we get really used to having fireworks around here and they're really fun. They usually go off from Edinburgh Castle, which uh, looks really spectacular. So that's what I'm going to paint today. So for this project, I've got um, some watercolour paper. This is 100% cotton um, and it's on a block. Um, that means that I can use a lot of water on it and it's not going to kind of um, buckle or um, distort the paper. So that's really good. So I've got my little watercolour set here. This isn't a set you can buy off the shelf. These are my, some of my favourite colours that I've bought individually and put in a little tin. Um, I will put in the description box which colours I've used today and I will occasionally mention them as well but it's really not important so I'm going to use a, a whole range of different colours and I'm going to use a lot of blues. The one colour I will mention is indigo uh, because it gets it's a really nice colour but also you can get it really dark which is what I want for a nice night sky so I'm going to use that but lots of other blues as well. I've got this three quarter inch um, flat wash brush, which has got like a nice square edge. Um, I'm really using this because it's fairly new and I'm kind of getting used to it. So that's why I'm using this one, but any kind of quite large brush that you can put a lot of water and color down with would be good. I've got a pencil. I'm gonna use just to do a little bit of sketching, not very much. And this, this is actually a masking fluid marker pen. Now you can use traditional masking fluid for this project. Um, but I'm going to have a play with this marker pen, which I've had, I actually had one a while back and I used it in a video and I really liked it uh, and then it went missing um, and I was really reluctant to buy a new one because I don't like buying new things if I know I've got one somewhere, but uh, it never turned up so I've bought myself another one. When you're painting watercolour, um, so watercolour fireworks, what I want is a dark background and then really nice bright white um, fireworks. But watercolour, you can't paint bright colours on top of dark ones. So in order to get bright colours, nice light colours, you need to um, reserve the white of the paper and kind of paint around it. Now, painting around hundreds of little dots of light could get a bit tedious. It's possible, but it could get a bit tedious. So I'm going to use the masking fluid to make the light spots that I will then um, I'll then paint over with my darker colours. Now, if you don't have one of these, um, you can use another medium to paint on top of the watercolour. So you could do the bottom layer in watercolour, you could do your nice sky in watercolour, and then you could add in the fireworks over the top um, in something like a gouache or an acrylic. Um, something like these Posca pens would work really well. Lots and lots of different options for that um, if you don't have or don't want to use masking fluid. I have also produced some line art uh, to help you with this project uh, if you would like to use it. You don't have to, uh, but if you'd find it helpful, it's available on my website and there'll be a link in the description box for that down below. So to start with, I'm going to put down um, some nice bright colours and these are actually going to be the colours of the fireworks. I can pick whatever colours I fancy. Uh, so I think I'm going to go for some reds and yellows and yeah, I'll just, I'll just play with them, see where I get. So I'm going to start by putting down some water. Oh, there's a bit of blue on my brush, never mind. It's me from the last thing I was painting. Right, now, water. So just clean water at this stage and I'm just kind of laying it down on the paper. 
Now you could go to the edges of the paper if you wanted to. You could also uh, put down a, a line of masking tape all the way around the outside if you want a nice clean edge. But for this, for some reason, I just thought it would, it like a nice broken edge would look good. And I'm just gonna keep painting this water down the page, probably to about there. So I don't need to go all the way down to the bottom. Um, I just want to do the sky really, so. So nice bit of water on the page and then I can just start picking up some colours and dropping them in. Let's go for a nice red and I'm just going to put some red there and I'm putting these kind of roughly where I think the kind of the bursts of the fireworks are going to be but it doesn't have to be exact. We're, we're gonna let the colours blend and bleed and do all sorts of exciting things. So let's put in a little bit of yellow maybe there and uh, let's see I actually want maybe like a limey green so I'm going to put some yellow up here so nice bright yellow and then I can take um, some nice bright blue and just add that in and that'll give me a nice green I want to be a little bit careful that I don't let the colors go too muddy so I might just pick up a little of that there with my paper towel and then go in with something that's going to complement that red, maybe like a nice purple up there. A bit more red on there. Let's have a bit more of that purple here like that. Um, and what else? Oh, actually maybe some pink, maybe some pink down here. And then I actually would like a nice bit of yellow at the bottom. Just a little swoosh of yellow. There we go. So I think that's pretty much it. There's not much else I need to do here. Um, so yeah, maybe just a couple of areas where the colour could be a little brighter. Pink in there. And as you can see, you don't need to be too precise with it. It's, it's going to sit underneath everything else. And um, yeah, and, and if these colours mix a little bit, that's great. I just don't want them kind of going muddy and brown. I want them to stay nice and vibrant. So I'm gonna take my yellow further down. So that is stage one and all I'm going to do now is just let that sit and dry completely uh, before I come in and add in uh, the firework layer. So this is now completely dry and I can start marking in where I want my fireworks and where I want the castle to be as well. So let's start with the fireworks because they're nice and simple. So I've got a pencil and I'm drawing this a little bit, um, yeah, a little bit darker than I normally would because I want you to be able to see it. So I'm just going to put in some circles and I'm roughly kind of spacing them where I put my blobs of colour, but you can, you don't have to. Um, so let's start with this red one here. About like that. And I do think I need to make that a little bit darker if you're going to see it. It's not terribly obvious on there, but yes, just putting in a circle there. And let's have one up here. And that's going to overlap the red one a little bit as well. Something like that. Um, I've got two big ones. I kind of want, I kind of want a purple one peeking out of here. Maybe it's a little bit smaller. And then two smaller ones in the middle, one there, and then maybe one there, something like that. So I've got five overlapping circles in different sizes. 
And then below it down here, I'm going to have my castle. Um, so I'm just going to put in a line for the put in a line for the like the baseline of the castle. It doesn't matter whether it's above or below the bit you've painted. Um, and then I'm just kind of roughly blocking in some shapes like this. And I'm not worrying too much about what they look like. I'm just kind of yeah, it's a little bit taller on this side and then it kind of goes down on that side. But yeah, just some little rectangles backwards and forwards. And I'm not putting in very much detail there at all. Um, what I might want to do is there's a nice curved bit and then some windows there. And then there's some windows here and I can roughly mark those in with pencil if I want to, but I'm going to come back to those and add them a little bit stronger later on. So I'm um, not worrying too much about those there. Um, just giving a sense of like the, the scale of it and wh where it's going to sit in relation to everything else. So I'm just going to move this purple one up just a tiny bit. Let's have it more like that. I just want to give myself a little bit more space there. And it doesn't matter about your sketch at this point because we're going to paint over it nice and dark so you're not going to be able to see it at all. But it's just to give you an idea of where the different lines are going to go. And then I'm going to zoom you into this circle up here and I'm just going to show you what I'm doing. Um, I'm not putting in a lot of detail with the pencil but what I want to do is roughly mark where the centre is and then I want to put in some lines going from the centre to the outside of that circle and then some of them, the smaller ones, the lines will be quite straight so they'll look like a bit like a, a bike wheel or something with spokes going out. With these bigger ones I think I want because they'll the bigger ones will be like later in the process of popping. So I want more of a curved kind of shape so it looks a bit more like a beach ball. So I've got curved spokes coming out from roughly from that centre. And I'm just putting a few lines in just coming out from there. And these are just direction lines. So all I'm going to use them for is to give me a sense of the direction of this firework. Now for each of the fireworks, I'm going in with my marker pen, my masking marker pen. Uh, if you haven't used one of these before, you give it a bit of a shake and you press down on the nib until the fluid starts coming through. And sometimes it, it if it's been open for a while it dries out again and you just need to do this a little while just to get the, the fluid flowing again. And then you just draw wherever you want it to be. So I'm going to draw on the light bits, so the fireworky bits. Um, and I'm just going to make a nice pattern of little circles and some light trails and things like that. So I'm going to put some little blobs around the outside, make like a ring of points of light and it doesn't matter whether these go on top of the pencil or whether they go around it because we can always, after we've got rid of the masking fluid, if you can see any little bits of pencil, which I doubt you will be able to, um, you can always get rid of them by rubbing them out. So I'm just going around and adding like a ring of uh, points around the edge of my firework um, and add in a few more and then you get more of the kind of points of light around the edge than you do in the middle but you do still get some in the middle uh, so I'm going to just go around and do another kind of circle around and add in another ring of little spots of light, but further spaced out than they are around the edge. And then maybe just a couple, like right in the middle there. We can always add more. 
And for some of the fireworks, that's all you'll want to do because some of the fireworks, they go up, they bang, there's little points of light and they're all very pretty and then they fade away. Some of them have also got little sparkly light trails in as well, and they show the direction that the fireworks moving in. So for this one, I want to put those in. So I'm going to, for each of my little spots, I'm going to add a little trail of lights. And that's why I put these direction lines in, the pencil lines, because I can make my trails follow those spots of light. So one for every little point of light that we've put in. And some of them will overlap and that's good. And the little trails of light will actually be shorter in the centre. So you'll only get like a few little dots close to the centre of the firework. And then these ones up here might actually kind of go up before they kind of come down. So I'm still following these kind of trails of light, these um, direction lines. But some of the, some of these directions kind of go up and then down a little bit. A bit like, a bit like little hockey sticks. And those direction lines that we put in earlier will just help everything feel cohesive and like it's all kind of come from the same point. Now I think I'm pretty much finished. I can just see if there's any bits that I've missed or anything that looks a little bit sparse, like maybe there I could do with another one like that. Maybe another one there. And just any bits that like could just do with a little bit more. I can just add a few more dots too. So that's this one done. I'm going to move on to the red one. And all I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to do the same process and I'm going to do my little direction lines like this. Kind of coming out in little curved lines from the center. But for this one, I'm just going to do the big dots. I might do more of them and put them a bit more close together. But I'm doing the same thing. I'm going around the edge, adding a little ring of dots. And make sure you overlap them as well. And then on each of these kind of direction lines, I can just put a few more coming out from that center. And then anywhere that I think might need another little splodge. I think that's pretty much it. I'm going to live with that. I'm going to carry on and I'm going to do my other three fireworks in exactly the same way. I'm going to do the little ones uh, in the same way as this, but the lines are going to be straighter because these are, they might be smaller fireworks or they might just be at a like a, an earlier stage, uh, but the lines will be a little bit straighter. And then this one here, I think I'll do the same as this this red one. So I'm going to carry on and then I'll come back when I've finished all of those. So now for my castle, um, I don't want to do very much here, but I do want to give like a suggestion of some windows. So just a few, and some of them can be like lined up like these. Um, and then there might be some here. Um, and then I've got some on this kind of curved section. I'm not worried too much if it looks exactly like Edinburgh Castle, but I just want to give like a, a sense of that. Um, 
and then maybe there's like a couple over here and maybe a few like down here there we go something like that and then the other thing I want to do is um, it's just when you have fireworks at Edinburgh Castle, they always kind of line the, the walls of the castle with those little fireworks that just kind of go up a little way. So I'm going to join these together with just some little curving lines like this. A couple like that. Um, I think that'll do. Um, and I'm going to do little trails of fireworks up like this starting out like as, as a kind of thin line of dots and then kind of gradually getting wider as they get up and get more dispersed as you go further up. See, little thin line of dots and then just slowly getting a little wider like that. And another one here. And that's, it is going right up through this one. You've got to be a little bit careful with the masking fluid because if you kind of touch a bit that you've already done, it does kind of lift a bit. But it, this is kind of a bit random anyway, so it doesn't matter too much if I lift one or two. So now I've added all of my masking fluid to my painting and I'm going to uh, make sure it's all dry. Uh, make sure it's um, nice and uh, and solid before you start painting over it. But I'm going to start um, adding in my dark layer of sky. So I'm mixing up some random blues. So this one is indigo. Um, it's nice and dark. Um, so I'll be able to get some real nice contrast between the bright colours that I've masked off here and this nice dark blue. And then I don't want the sky to be all one colour, and it's not going to be because I'm painting on top of all of these colours anyway, but I've also got a slightly warmer uh, blue where I've mixed um, a lot of that, um, some nice violet into it, and then I've got a kind of a really cool turquoise blue as well. Um, and that one is mainly Windsor blue, uh, but again, any colour, cobalt blue, something like that would work really nicely. And I'm just going to start um, making sure it's all dry and then I can start painting over my colours. So just making sure that I cover over all of my masking fluid. And I'm just adding that second layer of colour all over everything. Make that a nice purple at the top there. And I want some of these areas to be really nice and dark. And the watercolour will dry lighter as well, so uh, you can, while it's still wet, go in and add more pigment. I'm just varying these blues, putting them in different places. And where I add a cool blue, over the top of a, a red or something like that, I'll get um, I'll get a real nice contrast and I'll get a um, a nice dark tone there. But just keep adding colours, um, and you can just keep adding them while it's all still wet. And I'm moving roughly from the top to the bottom. Now I want a, a slightly lighter area down here. I still want to paint over these bits. I want to paint down to my castle, but I'm just not, I'm not going to load it with a lot more uh, uh, colour. And then my uh, castle down here I actually do want to be fairly dark and I'm just going to block that in. And it doesn't matter if it touches the, the bit above it. I'm just making this just that little bit darker. 
I'm putting in, using the flat bit of the brush to kind of give you that sense that some bits of rooftops and, um, and yeah, um, some bits of walls. I'm going to bring the kind of foreground down a bit and I might lighten this off a little bit and I could even add in some of the other colours down here as like reflections of the, uh, the, the, the fireworks that I've got going on up here. So I think there's a few areas where I would just want it to be like a bit darker. So as long as it's still wet, you can go in and do this and just add in more colour. Since it starts drying, then you'll end up with bleeds and things, which isn't going to look great. a little bit more indigo in a few places. Now I need to leave this all to completely dry again. So my sky is all dry now and before I go in and take the masking fluid off I just want to add a little bit more detail onto this uh, castle bit. So um, you can do as much as you like with this, you could just make it a silhouette um, and paint it dark. I'm going to use the indigo but if you wanted to use black that would be fine too. I'm just going to add a little bit of detail, not a huge amount, just to give a sense of some of the different walls and windows and Edinburgh Castle's like this little collection of buildings up on a hill and um, and yeah if I if I put in some different kind of areas then it'll just give a more of a sense of it being like um, yeah rather than one monolithic kind of structure it'll be like several different ones. So I can go in with my indigo again and um, there's just a couple of things I want to kind of get in that makes it look kind of Edinburgh-y. Um, so if you want to, you can refer to a photo or you can refer to my little sketch here. There's a kind of a rounded building kind of just off to the left of centre here. There's kind of quite a few like turrets and things up here to the top left and it's a little bit taller. Um, there's a little gatehouse here and then there's kind of a few roofs and things and it kind of, it, it kind of, yeah. It's not quite as tall at that side, it's taller on the left well, as you're facing it in, in this particular direction. So let's get that idea of a, like a rounded kind of structure in here where I've put those windows. Brilliant, will do. And then Something like that. Um, I want to kind of define the roof line over here and then give it some little turrets and things. I'm just going to use the um, my brush on the edge to give it some little sticky up bits. Pull that down there a little bit. Um, Maybe a little tower kind of thing here. Maybe another little tower here. Just suggestions. Little shapes that are just kind of suggestions of walls and things. Um, there's a, like a gatehouse here. And it's got, I'm just going to use the corner of my brush to paint like a little doorway in the middle. Uh, 
And then again, let's put in like another little roof over here. Some little chimneys or turrety bits or just something sticking up. Something like that. And I can bring that kind of dark line a little bit forward into the foreground as well again. So we've got suggestion of castle there. That's all I'm going for. That's it. Now again, I want this to completely dry and I really want to be sure that the whole thing is dry before I start taking away any of the masking fluid. If you don't feel that your uh, painting is dark enough, there's not going to be enough contrast between the sky and the, the fireworks that are underneath. If you're a bit worried about that, you can add another layer of paint on. Um, but I'm going to go with this and just see, see what I get. Now is the moment of truth. You can start just using your thumb or finger and rubbing the masking fluid and getting rid of it. If you've got like a hard eraser, I found that works really nicely. I just want to rub fairly gently at it. And the top layer of paint will come away and start revealing the colour that you put underneath. So here's my castle fireworks uh, nighttime watercolour painting. I really hope that you've enjoyed this one. Uh, if you give it a go, I'd love to see your version of it. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more from me, then do subscribe to the channel. So I've got a whole season coming up of uh, Edinburgh themed uh, art tutorials, uh, of which this is the first, and there's going to be eight weeks worth. Uh, there's going to be some different um, architectural themed uh, paintings. Uh, we'll be do going back to doing some traditional line and wash, which uh, those of you who've known my channel for a long time will know that uh, that's uh, one of the things that I've done quite a bit on here. Um, and we'll be tackling some new subjects on that. Um, but there'll be some other kind of creative watercolour and other uh, art uh, mediums as well. So I look forward to sharing those with you and I look forward to the next few weeks. So thanks very much and I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Bye bye.